We're on. Good evening. I'd like to call, we have a little echo in here. I'd like to call to order the meeting of the Board of Directors of Community Television of Santa Cruz County of March 25th, 2019. Uh, our secretary is absent today, so um, Vice Chair Rand has great, uh, gracefully uh, agreed to uh, be the secretary of this meeting. Would you kindly mm -hmm. call the roll? Yes. Director Maziars. Here. Director Hall. Here. Director Rand. Here. Director Mannheim. Here. Director Lorand. Director O'Driscoll. Here. Director Owen. Here. And Director Eisen Gonzalez. Here. Thank, Thank you, you very much. All right. I believe we have a quorum. And um, we can move on to item number two, which is oral communications. Uh, would anybody here like to address the board on any item that's not on our agenda? Seeing none, we can move on to item three, which is consideration of late additions to the agenda. Uh, are there any late additions that anybody would like to add? All right, seeing none, we can move right along to our consent agenda, which is items four and five. Uh, item four is to approve the minutes from our last meeting on February 25th. Item five is to approve the recommendation of the Finance Committee to accept the February 2019 financial reports. Um, are there any questions or comments on those items? Um, would our uh, the chair of our finance committee like to um, address the well I'd like to make a motion and unless there's any amendments to either of them that we approve um, item 4 which is approve the minutes of February 25th and approve the finance committee report of February 19th and I'll reserve any comments I have in terms of the finances until we get to the budget and talk about it at that place so anyhow those that's my motion approve the minutes and approve the financial report all right, we have a motion by Director Hall. Is there a second to that motion? Second. second. Okay, any further? Oh, uh, a second by Director O'Driscoll. Mm -hmm. um, do we have any further questions or discussion? Mm -hmm. All right, seeing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstention? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, that, that passes unanimously. All right, so we can move on to our regular agenda, and uh, our agenda is a bit of a doozy this month, so uh, we'll jump right in. Um, item number six is the election of a board member to a seat expiring November 2022. Hopefully that is correct. And uh, last month we built some suspense and, uh, <laughs> and uh, rumors have been flying, the, the social media is all flutter and uh, we can confirm indeed that the rumors are true and the nominee for our uh, open seat on the board, one of the two open seats, is none other than Mr. Guy Lanier. Um, Guy Lanier has lived, by way of introduction, um, has lived in Santa Cruz County since 1975, um, arriving to attend UC Santa Cruz, though earlier he lived in Brookdale for four years, attending kindergarten, kindergarten in Boulder Creek and first grade in Felton. So he's well familiar with the area. Um, after a career at local newspapers, including the Santa Cruz Independent, Phoenix, Register Pajaronian, San Jose Business Journal, Sentinel, and Mercury News, he joined UCSC in 2005 as a speechwriter and later worked as a writer, editor, and public information officer, retiring in December 2016. He produced listener commentaries for KUSP Radio in Santa Cruz from 2003 to 2016 and served on the public station's board of directors from 2009 to 2015, including five years as board secretary. So to me, sounds like a very eminently qualified uh, person. Would anybody like to uh, move? I'd love to. I've known Guy for over 40 years, and um, I think he's going to be a great addition to the board. So I would move uh, approval of the recommendation that he be added to our board. We have a motion by Director Mannheim. Is, uh, uh, would anyone like to second? We have a second from Director Hall. Um, any questions for our candidate or comments? All right, seeing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? Seeing none, it carries unanimously. Guy, please come and join us and welcome to the board. Thank All right. you very much. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. All right. We're going to need a larger table if uh, <laughs> we find anybody else. All right, so. Um, now we can move on to item number seven, 
which is to approve the draft 2019-2020 budget as proposed by our executive director. Um, would you like to make any comments on it, uh, Becca, or uh, does anybody have any questions? I think Becca should go first. Yes. Ah, well, um, this is a budget based on our um, actual expenses, so there's not guesswork, not much guesswork here, and um, and our projected income as um, as we've seen it increase over the years. So I know I have a good sense of what it would be next year. So it's um, there's nothing unusual in there. It's uh, basically the same thing we usually do. All right, we're staying the course. Uh, we have a question from Director Hall. Well, actually, I'd like to just uh, first of all thank the members of the Finance Committee, Tom um, Manheim, and the trays, uh, who spent quite a bit of time going over this at our last Finance Committee meeting, and we went literally almost item by item, not all of them. And uh, Becca's correct. This is based on basically current actions of what's going on now. There are really two parts to it. First, the operating budget, and second, the capital budget. Uh, in the operating budget, uh, just for the audience, the total budget's $259,000, which I consider a sign of success. That means our revenues through all the work of the volunteers, the community, the board members, has actually reached a reasonable operating level. It would be better if it was a little more and we could do more, but considering where we could have been and where we are now, I think it's really quite remarkable, and I think everybody should be thanked for that. Um, there wasn't really too much in terms of the operating budget. We went through a lot of details that I won't go through, but the committee spent a lot of time going through it. The capital budget um, is not all that much different, but there's a few things I wanted to point out in it. Uh, first of all, under the rules we operate under, and I won't get into all the details, we're able to uh, fund our capital improvements at a reasonable level, and we have what's called a community youth program where we're working with high schools to put the equipment in high schools and in other community locations so that we can kind of start to live stream more of Santa Cruz in a positive way. And so when you go to the capital budget, you'll see the top part and you'll see how that goes. Um, the other it, way we're able to work well is through the uh, co-working studio here and how we work on our lease for that and, and the revenue from that is one of our major uh, revenue streams and that's doing very well this year thanks to the work of Becca and uh, the folks that help run it and the tenants there. So there really isn't a lot more I could add other than it's uh, a really nice situation we're in, it could be better but it's a lot better than where we could have been a few years ago. So I was quite happy with it. But Tom, from a trade, do you want to add anything before we turn it back to the chair? Uh, I, I think you said it all. The one thing that um, hit me is it's not just where we could have been last, but where we were. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, where we were four or five years ago versus now, it's really like a world of difference. Um, I did want to point out one thing. I know that there was a very short turnaround between our finance committee and when this had to be posted. But on the capital budget, um, item 4106, you'll see county peg fees, and then you'll see another line that says county peg fees. I think we're going to uh, amend that to say county peg fees dash youth grants. Yeah. That's the difference between those two categories. So um, I would. I, I just wanted to add about the captioning. I think that we reduced the captioning amount to reflect what we are currently um, actually receiving, though we are hoping that there will be um, um, more clients for our captioning service as um, time progresses. Whether, whether it will happen this fiscal year or not remains to be seen. And that's offset by expenses. Last year that we projected a lot more captioning and a lot more expense to do it, so it didn't really affect us in a big way. Great. Um, that's all I have. I, I would move approval of the budget unless, I don't know, are there other, other questions? Anyone have any other questions about the budget? Believe me, we spent a lot of time on <laughs> it. <Yeah>. So. <laughs> <laughs> then I, I'd move approval. All right, we have a motion. A second. A second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that passes unanimously. We have a budget. Which uh, now I guess goes on to the uh, the county, right? And I'd also like to mention I did in mind Mel Sweet, who does all our accounting work, has really done mm. a good job of bringing this up. So if she happens to see this, her daughter should come up and give her a big pat on the back. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you, Mel, for all your hard work. 
Wonderful. All right, we can move on to item eight, which is the oral report of our executive director. And um, I, I was going to start calling you executive director King Reed, but well, you prefer Becca. Like. So uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we don't stand on yeah. formalities here. No, no, no. Please take it away. We're but. such a small group. <laughs> so um, this is this is very exciting this month because um, this is the end of March, and on the first of April is when we opened the co-working center. That was our brainstorm idea to fund. Uh, this, this is our main, our big revenue fund for the operating budget, and I just thought it would be fun for you to see if you were able to print out your, your, uh, my report in color. Mm. Um, you can see that. Um, well, let me tell you first. This month we're in profit, of course, again this month, and six new companies joined in March, which is good for us, and um, and now we are three. Um, <laughs> we're um, on April 1st is our big birthday so uh, here is our report from April 2016 um, and that big circle is mostly purple if you looked at it in color and that's a negative number that is that we projected that we would make $17,000 a month here and we will we're not doing it yet we really weren't doing it then that's mostly most of the circle is deficit we made $314 our first month that we were open and uh, this month we made, um, the same month, we made uh, 10,600. So we've done a really good, good job of, you know, and it's, it's thanks to the board for being willing to step out of the box for a real weird idea and, um, and supporting it all this time. There's a number of board members really put a lot of work into this and um, it's been great. And I thank the board for the support on that and it's only gonna get better. Um, paid services this month, we did um, 17 government meetings, and the meetings seem to be going really long, <laughs> which is <laughs> good for us. <laughs> Maybe, and um, usually when it gets to budget time, we can do up to 24 meetings in a month, so, so we're going to start to pick up speed now. Uh, on our documentation service, we have recorded um, a series that we do every year for Dominican Hospital, so that was a... That's a good thing, and it's a recurring uh, meeting that they trust us with every year. And um, we are doing some, um, Victor is still doing the programming for CMAP right now, but um, I have a new guy who's going to take it over, so it'll be off Victor's plate soon. And, um, and he can, I don't, he can do something with that free time. Um, we have a professional production coming in probably in April. We, we're saving days on the calendar for them to do this production. And, and so um, we'll have some uh, paid production coming out of the studio in April. And um, we have, uh, under equipment leases, we started a program where we could lease nonprofit, uh, nonprofit companies um, equipment so that they could create content for us and for their own their own organizations. And we have a lease in the works with uh, Kawumba, and that, that um, we're really excited about that. And um, we should by next month have, like, probably have it done unless there's something weird that we have to adjust. But we expect it'll be complete and we'll be off and running on our equipment lease program. And uh, under staff, Victor is trained to new government technicians, and um, we like them very much. They're, they, they're young, and they've been doing production on their own, and we're excited to have them join the team. And uh, our, our youth um, grant committee is holding a workshop in March on the 30th at 1 p.m. So if you, um, so anyone who would, you know, is it with a nonprofit organization or a school who would like to apply for a grant to get video equipment should come and uh, do the workshop. And we we'll basically walk you through the application and give you all the tips that you need to be successful in applying. Where is it? Just so here, here, here. Okay. Yeah. Three two five SoCal App. Exactly right. Santa Cruz. Yes. So right in our conference room, and um, you can go to our website communitytv.org and register. And you need to register, so go there, and it's on right on the front page. Scroll down a little, and you'll see it, and, and you can register. There's a green button. It's free. Mm -hmm. Right. But um, <laughs> but we need to know, we want to be prepared for everyone who comes, so we'd like to know how many people are coming, so that's the only reason to register. Mm -hmm. um, under equipment and facilities, um, once again, I must report, we do not have fiber, and um, it is the same reason. We're still waiting for a permit to happen, 
and I just gotten an update from them and from Comcast, and uh, they'll they say they'll update us again when they know more. So so far, nothing <laughs> to report. But on an exciting um, note, the um, inside the building, we built something called the really simple video place, which is a tiny studio that can be operated by one person. So you can come in and record yourself. And uh, we have a little um, uh, video of it, and we're gonna show it off right now, I think. Excellent. You need video, we can help. Introducing the really simple video place. Need a marketing plan for your website? A public service announcement? A PowerPoint presentation? A new product introduction? Video blog? Video resume? Musical performance? In the RSVP, you could do it yourself. We have good sound equipment, great lighting, and five different backdrops. And no distractions. Your phone video just won't do it. Come on down to the satellite facility and check it out. Our helpful community coordinator, Ian, will be glad to help you. Call us at 831-531-2300 or email us at rsvp at communitytv.org for more information. It's really simple. This video was made in our RSVP. You can do it too. That was great. All right. Yeah. 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 So thank you, Keith Gudger, for making that video and for building the RSVP. <laughs> he did a lot of work in there to make it fun Is and it to finished? make it really easy. It's finished. Yeah, yeah, it, it's perfect now. You can just go in, put your flash drive in, hit a couple of clicks on the computer, and you're in business. So it's really Let's wonderful. See, this was kind of one of the few times I've been to one of those strategic planning meetings where an idea comes up. Mm -hmm. and I don't remember, Judy, if you remember us talking mm -hmm. about it and then to see it actually happen. Usually you see an idea come up and there's another report and another report <laughs> and pretty soon the idea disappears. <laughs> so uh, anyhow, thanks to Keith. Uh, Judy, I think it was one of the things that you thought about at the time. Mm -hmm. I know I didn't, I maybe you and Keith, Keith together. Came so. up with that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I encouraged it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So anyhow, it was, it's kind of fun Recording. to see that idea come alive. And I can tell you, I did a little video today with Keith's help. Oh, I'm right. And I think with uh, a little bit of more thinking about it, without him there, it's actually really pretty easy. Uh, what's frightening about it, though, is everything you say you have to look back at again. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard looking at yourself. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty simple. There are a list of instructions there, and I've done it. I did it without knowing anything. I went in with the instruction list and went through it, and, and it worked for me. It was, it's very easy. It's really, really simple, and we're very excited to premiere it. Um, people can test it out on uh, First Friday. We're going to have it open on first Friday, and we'll also um, we'll have, of course, uh, uh, art too. But but you can take it take a spin in the really simple video place if you like. Um, in under uh, communications and publicity, Ian Barry, who is our um, community coordinator, held the first Friday event last month or this month in March, and had a great turnout. There are lots of new faces, and we featured the art of. Um, Janice Cirilla, who has a um, great, she paints really fun animal pictures, and she has, a, we have a lot of her cards and a bunch of pillows with animals all over them, and they're really, really fun. And they'll be up until the end of the month if you haven't seen it yet. And then on um, April 5th, we'll have a new, exhi a new exhibit, and we'll have, the, uh, we'll have the RSVP going, and also the Vive in the, in the uh, studio, so you can try out virtual reality. So there's all sorts of things you can do with cameras here on uh, on First Friday. Mm -hmm. And let's see, is that, I think that might be it. Oh, our April artist is Megan Nkow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't, um, it's G-N-E-K-O-W, mm -hmm. I think is Nkow. Mm -hmm. And um, she does some very interesting art that it's very scientific portrayals of um, animals and insects and flowers and things, it's beautiful. So we're looking forward to having her here. And that's my report for March. Great, Becca. Thank you very much. That's uh, some good news and uh, making a lot of progress. And happy birthday to Community TV coming up. Um, so thank you. Um, so uh, shall we move on to item number nine? Uh, unless there are any questions or comments? Uh, nope. 
All right, moving on to item number nine, which is a report from the Ad Hoc Strategic Planning Committee. Uh, is there anything further to report uh, from the committee? I, I, um, I know you're looking at me because I've last reported in the past, yes, yes. but um, since I didn't make the last meeting, I'm going to... Well, to tell you the truth, Tom, we cheat without everything. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happened. 180 degrees. Well, actually, actually, Tom, you'll be very pleased to know that we went into some more details and came up with some great ideas. Great. So, but I don't think anything to report yet okay. to, the, to the rest of the board. Uh, because, of course, we want to hear first what you say about mm -hmm. it. We wouldn't dare to pass anything to the board. Just kidding. Um, in terms of the schedule, how many more meetings are... are Planned? Is it? Was I, it I, I think I, I think it was through the end of April, so that would be two more in okay. April. Great. Then we can expect to hear the the grand uh, finale. Finale. Yeah. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I we'll look forward to. We'll um, perform it. Oh, fantastic! <laughs> <laughs> oh. In verse. Maybe you can make a video. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so the, the RSVP. Right. The report. Um, great. Okay. Well, we can uh, move unless there was anything else on that. We can move on to item number ten, which is the summaries from the. Board retreat subcommittees. I understand that we do have a report back from our library mm -hmm. subcommittee, Director O'Driscoll. I'm very pleased to tell you that um, we're moving along very well on the partnership between CTV and the public library. Earlier in the month, um, Director Hall, Director Rand, and I met with uh, three members of, and I will get to her, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, with three members of the uh, of the uh, library Sorry, staff, right. marketing, and uh, people who are doing technical uh, instruction for both the staff and the public. And we were joined by Becca, and um, we just talked about what might be possible, what kinds of cooperative things we could do together. It um, went very well. The staff was very excited about it, and Becca invited them to come here to get a little tour. They did that. Last week they came back very excited and they said, what should we do next? And I said, well, let's keep going. So they've already called another meeting that will include the um, library director and we're going to get down to nitty gritty in details. So I'm very excited. They were very impressed with you and very pleased with the oh. tour you gave them and what you told them. Oh, well they had, yeah, the tour was actually given by Ian Berry, our coordinator, as I was booked the day they wanted to come, but he knows all about it, so. Yeah. He had a good, he, he's, he gives a good tour. I'm glad they enjoyed it. Great, yes they did. So, we're moving right along. Excellent, that's great news. All right, well thank you. Um, so we heard about the uh, our first equipment lease, which is in the works. And I did not hear the, the, the report on that. Yeah. Oh, I finally. I mean, I know there's been progress, progress, oh, yeah, progress. Yeah. Can you update mm -hmm. that? Somehow? Well, they picked out their equipment, mm -hmm. and um, we put together a lease, and then um, uh, Bobby has been out of town. Okay. So we have to get back together and look at it together, but we've, um, be, we've got the lease in the works. Oh, my God. And what? Total sum? Do you think they think about eighteen thousand dollars? It's a good start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So um, <laughs> I'm eager to. I, I attended an event at the Resource Center for Nonviolence this past month, and and there were some people running around with little cameras. You know, I think they were with the you know the, the people running the event. But I I couldn't help but looking around at those walls and think, wow, these would look great with some cameras up there. They have the nice sound system. They have a great facility. So I'd love to um, once we get this first one under our belt, start. Um, moving on and, and uh, talking to some of the other venues in Santa Cruz about uh, what we can do to, to help them. Um, great. And then um, we heard about the RSVP, which is another one of the committees. So that is gonna, looks like it may be our first um, big success from that last uh, board retreat. Um, does anybody else have anything else on item number 10? All right, seeing that. Um, we can move on to item 11, which is the oral report from the Voluntary Advisory Committee. Committee Chair reports. Good. Um, I don't have very much to report this month. A, because you keep me so busy here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we will have our next um, Volunteer Advisory Committee uh, next Saturday. Not oh. this coming, but okay. the one after that. And we'll review what the committee, uh, they call the new producer committee, is suggesting. And then we will take that to the board mm -hmm. after that. Um, and other than that, we keep doing our programs and 
and are excited with you know first friday i mean it's so exciting to see on the first friday ian in here and setting things up for the virtual reality um thing but i'm very excited that he's going to do the rsvp mm. uh, so i assume we're not doing virtual reality this time um, but anyway so not too much reported except for we keep moving along excellent excellent well thank you appreciate that and uh, i'm gonna have to ditto you uh because uh the next item is item 12 the oral report of the board chair and um, i actually brought my family here uh my extended family uh our melded family to the first Friday event. We kind of caught the tail end of it and um, admired the, the beautiful artwork out there and got to meet the artist. And Ian was very kind to, uh, we had some uh, six, nine, and 11 year old with us. So, um, you know, virtual reality with cords and things. Uh, <laughs> he was very patient. Uh, we, we didn't break anything, thankfully. And um, I think we might have a virtual reality birthday party in the works. Uh, Ian, of course, mentioned that the equipment is available for rental. Yeah. So um, we were like, wow, this, this would make a great, uh, a great birthday. Uh, uh, make everyone go easy. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> then have birthday what cake right afterwards. <laughs> so um, I'm very happy we're doing the first Friday uh, events. I'll mention one other, one other thing um, that uh, uh, a letter was sent to community TV addressed to me by our rep uh, well, representative uh, Anna Eshu. I guess I guess we're not actually in her district. Oh, here. we are. Scotts Valley. Oh, Scotts Valley is okay. Yeah. Well, my street address was not. Um, but um, uh, anyway, so she uh, was writing to let us know that she had um, written to the FCC chairman and the and the rest of the um, commission uh, opposing. Um, they had some distressing uh, things in the works. Uh, having to do with uh, the way we get our funds and uh, cable companies being able to deduct uh, the fair value of the um, stations. So we, we are definitely hoping that does not uh, go through. And uh, I sent a message thanking um, Representative Eshu for um, trying to stand up for us and um, voicing her displeasure with that um, proposal. Did, did you? Uh contact uh, Congressman Panetta's office too in this process? I have not. I believe you wrote letters, yeah, and, and Keith uh, as I well. sent letters earlier and so did the Board of Supervisors, yeah. but we still have time to send more letters. I got a thing today from the organization that does sort of the trade organization for community television station. I sent all the board members, oh, except for Judy. You just got I'm it sorry. today. I didn't send yours, but I'll send you one. There is a letter already written up that you can sign and it will identify your um, Congress member by your zip code and it's really important to do it because they they gave us a list of all the Congress people who've been at, been approached and Eshu is the only one from California mm -hmm. so we need to get uh -huh. to Kamala Harris mm -hmm. and and, uh, uh, and we can also get to Jimmy Panetta also right. with that same letter so the letters there all you have to do is a couple of clicks put in your mm -hmm. zip code and off it goes and if you we want to you can actually send a physical letter but mm -hmm. you can do an email real easily so it'd be great if you would all do that, and hopefully our members would just do the too. board, or also people who are anybody, watching. Anybody, everybody, people who are watching, anyone can do it. I sent the I I sent an email off to um, um, Keith and Karen who have our membership list. So hopefully they can send it out in our in our email list, and other and people can do it. And how big is our too. email list? I don't know. Big. <laughs> it is pretty big. Yeah, but yeah, oh, I know there are a whole good. bunch of nonprofits on it. Yeah. Yes. Well, one, one thing, Mr. Chair, uh, it, is it too late if we put it on our agenda next time and have the board take action? Yeah, it might be. Okay. Um, yeah. That's okay. I just the letter was from uh, 26th of February, and it referenced the second reading, so uh, I'm not sure exactly what the timeline yeah. is. Okay, uh, that's fine. I just Did you know. send that on behalf of the board or the, um, the, I did. the CTV? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's fine. That was kind of her to send a letter back to right. us. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was very nice. If, if somebody wanted to learn more about what the issue is and then send a letter. Yeah, the issue is they're, they're, the cable companies are trying to rewrite the laws about how we receive franchise fees so they can basically stop giving them to us. <laughs> so, yeah. so it's really dire. So it's important. I can. I don't have off the top of my head where to contact, but I can. Is there a bill number or anything we could? Uh, there is, well, I could probably figure that I, out. I, I sent you a scan of that uh, yeah. earlier earlier today. I, I, I scanned the letter, and I, I guess I could have sent it to the whole board. But um, um, yeah, sorry to bring such a downer to the uh, an otherwise nice a very meeting. upbeat meeting. But um, <laughs> uh, 
Now, is it the FCC or the House of Representatives that has the bill? Well, well it's, I don't think it's an actual bill. I think it's, an, it, it, from what I read, it's an interpretation of existing law, mm -hmm. and it's how the, how the commission, the so FCC, the FCC is, is interpreting yeah, okay. it. So it's, um, yeah, it's a, it's a proposal by them. Though I, I must admit, it's I, an I, FCC rule. I'm not a lawyer. Okay. Yeah. Now, there are 7,000 letters have gone to Congress disapproving uh, the proposed rule changes. And that's not very many. Is that so is that in the link you sent us then? And I can, it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's all fine. that is in there. So I'm not sure how to get this information. There's not a bill number here. There was a bill number on the thing we sent earlier the, in the year. This I think is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. In any case, um, regardless of the outcome of that, uh, hopefully we will find a way to uh, carry on as we have so far in the past and. Uh, but yeah, as, as many members of the public, members of the board, members of community television can um, make their voice heard, uh, the better. Um, would there, one other thing, would there be any chance to put a link to that in our website in case people wanted to look it up? I think okay. we could. I can, yeah, I can ask if we okay. can do that. Absolutely. I have all sorts of ideas and everybody does the work. Or do they still, do it every yeah. year? No, no it's, it, they did, the last time they did it was in the 80s, but okay. there's okay. now... It's a new thing. Not yes. like an ongoing. Mm -hmm. Well, they've tried it before. This is a different. Yeah, they try different. This is a different angle all angle. the time. Okay. It's kind of a, it's kind of an ongoing battle. Mm. Yes. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, that's all I have uh, for that. But um, um, we can move on to item number thirteen, which is more happy news. So this was uh, to approve the actual verbiage of the equipment lease agreement, and. Um, the expenditure of funds. Um, I believe it's anything over $10,000. Um, our executive director must come to the board and seek approval for under 10,000. She can do it at her own discretion. So, um, so hopefully everyone has had a chance to review that equipment lease. I know uh, the director to my left ha has. Um, um, were there any questions or comments? Uh, yeah, um, I. Um, on my understanding, first off, I just want to confirm that we're going to have our attorney look it over. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's just going to be a long time before I meet with you again. So that's right. Why and I know we're trying to keep this yeah. moving. Um, right. So uh, I, I have some sort of minor non-substantive things that I don't need to go into, but I'm just going to pass those on to Becca um, and so that when she meets with the attorney, she can just look at that. And but it would not be changing substantially anything mm -hmm. in, the, in the lease. Um, I guess I'll, I'll point out one specific thing, which is in 10, which is the lesser's indemnification, um, there's a line that I think needs to be clear where it says, uh, just at going from one page to the next, where it says, Lisey shall assume the setting, settling of and the defense of suits or other legal proceedings. I think it needs to say, Defense of any such suit, so it's clear that it's referring to the ones in this paragraph. So, mm -hmm. um, with that, I move approval. I, have a, I do have a question. Um, just it mentions the equipment that's um, listed in attachment one or something, or schedule one. I was just was wondering what the equipment was. I'm not sure what it is. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so, oh, okay. It's actually it's speakers, and it's particular kinds and sizes of speakers. Oh, that, I think they were monitor, monitor, from the meeting, yeah. I believe they were monitor speakers. They have a really nice front of house sound system, um, but the monitor speakers that the artists actually hear themselves using are getting older and mm -hmm. in and, and some disrepair. So I, I think that's what yeah. they wanted to. I have the yeah. actual model numbers and that sort of thing. I haven't listed them here because we haven't. Okay, the that's, list, that's, I was just curious yeah, if there it was video equipment time. or sound or what. And then the, the Final thing is that under 15, the purchase agreement, I wasn't sure exactly if I got what that was. Um, I mean, I guess they're making their pay lease payments, and then at the end of the lease, they essentially own it, and yes. there's a turnover of a, a dollar or exactly. something. Okay. Yes. Sir. One thing uh, we talked about in the finance committee, as I understand it, what's exciting about this is there'll be some new programming we receive from this yes. too. Yes. Yeah. If you want to mention that a little. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, whenever we do this, we need to receive programming back. It's part of uh, the way our company works, 
And so uh, they have a series of master classes in music that they recorded, and they're going to give those to us for programming. And okay. then um, as as they go along, and when it's possible, they'll record artists for you know as long as the artists will let them. And uh, uh, so you know, a lot of musical artists won't allow themselves to be recorded for television. Mm -hmm. But sometimes they'll let you do two songs or something like that. So they have the camera equipment already? They do they have a camera. So they yeah. have one camera, one camera. They have one. And a really good sound system and really good audio recordings. Right. They get multi-channel audio right, recordings right. and everything. So, okay. Yeah, so it's nice programming about music that we don't have now. And hopefully over the uh, five years they have it, we'll be able to develop some other kinds of programming. Any equipment that they're leasing from us this enhances. Yes, yeah, it enhances the experience for the artists so that they can hear better what they're doing. I did not realize that the Kuwamba had master classes in music. Yeah. And the interesting thing is we've been looking for a venue to do when this artist, Daryl Sturmer, is coming because he's going to be playing at the Kuwamba, mm -hmm. but he's restricted from, from doing anything commercial outside. And so Keith and I have been racking our brains for how we can get more benefit, we could get him to do a Kowamba yeah. master class yeah. and give it to you. We're thinking, how can he do it here in our studio? We don't have, you know, but he can actually do he one for there. Kowamba mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. and we can help bring some of our trainees to it, mm -hmm. and then it can come back as one of our yeah. content. Yeah. So yeah. you have just solved the problem. Keith and I have been raking <laughs> our. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. 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 Cool. Great. It's all uh, teamwork, huh? Yeah. Um, are there any I further? Solved it. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> uh, any further comments or questions from members of the board? Um, there was a motion, right? Was there a motion? There, there I, was. I, I, I moved. Okay. And was there a second? It was very moving. <laughs> <laughs> was there, did I hear a second? Uh, did I miss that? I huh? second. Oh, okay. Director Isaac Gonzalez seconds. Okay. I'll call the question. All those in favor, please indicate indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Carries unanimously. Great. That is wonderful news. All right. Um, so, uh, do we have any announcements from members of the board? We've got First Friday coming up. Um, oh, sorry. I, I, thank you, Secretary. Uh, well, that's my whole job. You told me. Make sure you do number 14. Yeah, I, see, I was checking them off before, but I, I, I was like. I okay. know you did number 13. Yeah. Now we have number See, I, I think 14 is unlucky, so I just wanted to oh, <laughs> um, it's 13. So do, do any board members or uh, members of the staff have any requests mm -hmm. for specific items to appear on the next meeting agenda? Um, I don't see any. All right, so now we can move on to item 15. Absolutely. Which is announcements. Um, if the board doesn't have anything further, I will um, take this opportunity to thank our all-volunteer crew who make this possible. Um, and today they are Richard Dussel, Phil Harmonic, Nick Kirkendall, Linda Janakis, Keith Gudger, and Karen Scott. So thank you all very much for coming here today. Um, and do we have I another announcement? No, I just like to uh, make a move to adjourn this meeting. Oh, I didn't. I didn't call the item yet. Though. <laughs> item number sixteen is adjournment. Uh, is there a motion for? <laughs> we have a motion. Is I there a second? Second. Uh, second. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. We are adjourned. Thank you very much. <laughs>